Hi. Okay, so yesterday morning I recorded a video talking about toxic relationships and friendships. I've talked about giving people money and they never paid me back. One sweet mate in particular took $10 from me and I ended up not receiving it. She never gave it back to me. Instead, she started avoiding my calls, sending me straight to voicemail, not coming back to her room until late at night, pretty much avoiding me at all times. And it was very frustrating because she would tell my roommate that the reason why she couldn't pay me back was because she was so-called poor. But if, if you know that you are poor, then why would you borrow money from someone and say you will pay them back with the intent of not paying them back. I know people are always telling you, well, you know, people aren't going to pay you back. It doesn't matter if people are like that. The person who is the problem is the person that took money from you and decided not to pay you back. You shouldn't have to feel as if you are being blamed for other people's misdeeds. So stop the victim blaming logic by saying, well, you should know how people are because I don't care how people are. It, it, is, it is your responsibility to not be dishonest. That's all I have to say about that. If I trust you enough to borrow money from me and pay me back, you should at least return the favor by doing that. I've had people say, oh, I forgot my money in my car. Well, sweetie, if you forgot your money in your car, maybe you should go back to your car and get your wallet instead of expecting me to pay for your meal. I've had that happen to me before. And when I asked, well, where's your wallet if you're going to pay me back? The girl was basically like, um, and she never pretty much mentioned that again. And she never paid me back because people will take advantage of the fact that some of us may not want to be confrontational. It's common sense. If you borrow money from people, pay them back. I shouldn't have to remind you. You know what you owe me and you know what your responsibility is. I'm not going to remind you, but if I have to, I will. But be a good person and give people the money back because you borrow the money. That means it is your responsibility and goodwill to give that person you borrow from the money back. And that's all I have to say with that. Another type of toxic relationship I've been in, it was fairly recent, but I would hang out with these group of girls in an organization. And one particular girl I grew close to, she is biracial, so she's black and white, and we would just get along really well. We would just click. She got along with other girls that I didn't necessarily feel as comfortable with, but it was all good for me. However, some of the girls would get mad at me and claim that I was only hanging out with her because she was black like me, not because I liked her personality or simply felt more comfortable around her, but just because it was some ulterior motive where I was being a reverse racist by preferring to hang out with the biracial girl versus the white girls who kept saying some slick comments to me like, oh, you are in this organization for black women. Well, if we were a group of white women calling ourselves this and that, we would be racist, stuff like that. So how can you say some pretty anti-black comments to me or at least racially insensitive comments and then expect me to always be at your beck and call when you decide, okay, where is she? I wanna hang out with her now. No, that's not going to happen, but I've had I have like I've experienced some jealousy from people where if I if I were to hang out with a group of people, they would say, well, why are you hanging out with these people and not me? And it would usually be people who I didn't think really liked me in the first place. They would always treat me some type of way, always not appreciate me for who I was, try to change me or my attitude or my personality. So when I found another group of people to surround myself with, they would always come at me as if I did them wrong, when really they weren't really paying attention to me in the first place and are just mad to see that I am with people who make me feel good about myself as if they don't want to see me happy. 
I've had people like that. I know other people have had people like that around them and it's just not a very good feeling to have if you are constantly being judged for the type of friends that you have. And I think this is a huge problem if you are in an interracial friendship where your friend may be white and you are of color, especially black, and you make friends with people of the same race as you and your white friend would think, well, why are you hanging out with them if you're not hanging out with me? I feel as if you just like them better because they are black or they are of color or the same race as you. And that whole basically white narcissism where they feel that it's always about them. They should always be catered to, to I'm talking fast, but catered to by POC and when they don't get that it really hurts their ego so it's more so of a fragile ego where how dare you hang out with these group of black people people like you and not with me I've had girlfriends try to guilt trip me make me feel like I was a racist because I had friends that they weren't necessarily comfortable with hanging out with and they would try to turn it around as if I was the bad guy for sometimes trusting those people with my issues versus the white girls. And when it comes to certain problems we have, we're not going to turn we're not, we're not going to tell one group of people about issues that we have versus another group of people that we may trust better. That's just how it is. We're not going to always say, "Hey, I have this problem because you may feel that they will blab about it or just be very non-understanding. They will accuse you of things. That's just not true. And that's why I haven't bothered telling people about certain issues that I've had, like with that whole guy issue I said in the last video. One more thing I wanted to say, because I feel this really ticks me off, but I remember Quite a few months ago, there was this guy that I was talking to fall of 2013. He seemed nice and we're still talking to each other, but this person for the longest time would act very distant towards me, would start acting as if I was the problem, ignoring my calls, telling me, hey, some things that you did, I just can't really fuck with. I, I, I don't really want to forget easily this bullshit where I can forgive but I can't forget when the issue was he was ignoring my calls so I had finally called him on another friend's cell phone which he answered right away and then got mad at me when I caught him doing it and then trying to make it like I was a bad guy and then he was talking to another girl during the whole situation and eventually I started backing off from him until 2014 of fall where he was like hello how are you trying to give me a hug and I accordingly gave him a hug but apparently he felt some type of way with how I gave him a hug because people don't like it when I give them side hugs first of all I'm not a very tactile type of person I don't really like to touch people so one thing I hate is when a person gets upset if you don't hug them the wrong way the right way I'm, I'm just talking real fast right now because I'm so irritated right now but sorry about my speech anyway people would get mad at me if I don't hug them the right way oh you can't hug I did hug but because if I give them a little side hug and I'm not going like this they would get mad at me as if I am obligated to touch them. And if I don't feel comfortable hugging you, you shouldn't make me hug you. So then he would tell people, well, she doesn't hug me properly. And she just totally changed. She's not the same girl that I met when you were the one who basically cut me off. But then when you decided, oh, okay, I like her again. I want her back or some type of way, trying to make it like I was the one avoiding you or being distant, you started making it like, oh, it's me who doesn't want you, not you avoiding me, making all types of excuses. And then once you saw that I changed my appearance or 
dressed in a way that you found appealing and you became more attracted to me, then suddenly I was a problem. I was the bad guy because I was no longer interested. You could have just said, okay, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have treated you that way. You could have acknowledged what you did, but instead you try to you try to gaslight me as if I was the one that made us drift apart when that's not true. And whoever is watching this, beware because there are guys like this who will say it's your fault and you were the one that caused the friction in the relationship, knowing good and well that it wasn't you. There are guys who will avoid you and then come at you with, you don't talk to me anymore. And that's pretty toxic when it comes to that guilt tripping where they make it as if you are the one not putting effort into the relationship when that's simply not true. If they want you back, that's fine, but they could at least be honest about it instead of pretending as if you changed when it was them who changed. And suddenly I am being ungrateful because I'm not into him like that anymore because I'm not going out of my way to say, hey, how are you? Or I'm not going out of my way to show that I am interested. Once I became interested in other guys and started moving on and just basically worry, worrying about myself, that's when he felt some type of way and got mad at me when I stopped really paying attention to him. It's not my fault because whatever opportunity you had with me, you pretty much blew it. And now everyone's trying to say, well, why, why are you being so mean to him? Because when I did want him, I was the one being so-called obsessive and crazy and just not letting it go. And then when I got over him, suddenly I am, I am the bitch again because I'm not trying to mess with him. But now he wants me. So apparently I have no agency. If I want someone and they don't want me, I have to lower my standards and find someone who does want me that I don't really want. And then if I don't want that person anymore, but they want me, then I have to pretty much just stop what I'm doing and go back to that person. And that's not going to happen. I don't care if I am a black woman, disabled woman at that, I am not going to sacrifice my mental stamina and well-being just to make some man feel better. We can be friends, but I'm not going to be forced to talk about a person that I am no longer interested in, especially if I am still emotionally attached or interested in another person. And for friends to keep bringing that situation up, even when you tell them that you are uncomfortable and that you don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, you should, you should deal with it now. Like shut the fuck up. If I tell you, I don't want to talk about it. You shouldn't keep talking about it and making me feel uncomfortable. I've had it happen a couple of days ago where they had said something pretty vulgar and pretty much made me lose my appetite. And they kept telling me a very inappropriate joke that I just, said I didn't want to hear anymore, but apparently if I tell them I'm not comfortable, that gives them ammunition to keep doing it. And you shouldn't want to be around people that want that want to make you uncomfortable just for their laughs. They should respect your space and boundaries. So that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. I I did want to mention interracial friendships, intraracial friendships where it's people within your own racial group where sometimes it can be problematic, especially if you have an issue that does not pertain to them. They will be the first to talk about racism, but then when they themselves are bringing up insensitive comments about someone's race, such as making an anti-black comment about blue ivy or a misogynistic comment about black women, suddenly, oh, you're not being supportive or suddenly how dare you talk about light skin or mixed people because now you're being racist against your own kind because how dare you criticize people within your own race but then they don't care if you talk about white people it's like you can criticize everyone else but us and i think that is a that is a huge issue in interracial friendships or relationships where you are not allowed to criticize interracial problems but you can criticize everything else as long as it doesn't directly affect the people that you are talking to about it but people are just going to be that way and I don't know what to do about it. I am going to stop right now because I'm kind of tired and I want to rest for a little bit. So 
put in your comments. Tell me stories about your so-called toxic relationships or so-called friends. Just put your comments in the section. Have a great day. Happy Sunday.